So guys, the Cooler Master that you guys know and that we know best is not necessarily the Cooler Master as a company whole because a lot of the items that they actually manufacture are for spaces outside of the PC hardware space. So for example, right here, one of the major things that they actually do is manufacture liquid cooling systems for electric cars. So for those key batteries and not only that, for things like LED headlights as well. So the reason why I'm actually talking about that at this point in time is that sort of specialty has allowed them to develop a very, very deep engineering background and it has allowed their PC hardware component items to sort of mature in a way that a lot of other companies haven't been able to. So let me explain this with the actual fans that are already out in the market. So I know this has already been released, but it does point towards the progression between the engineering on their ODM side, sort of cascading down into the consumer side. So things like a double reflow bearing, these airflow channels that they've created for this fan, and a bunch of other technology that have made the Mobius probably one of the best performing fans in the last couple of years, all come from that expertise into here. Now the reason why I also wanted to talk about this is because the Mobius fans are going into additional products this year and some of them there they sort of hit very very close to home for me. So the first thing I wanted to talk about here is how they are going to be sort of flowing down into the ITX market. One of these things that you're going to see here is the Master Air TD4. Now this is a direct competitor. It's 47 millimeters high to the, guess what, the Noctua L9 series that has been sort of like the champion in the ultra low profile cooler market for a while. So what is so special about this? Well, first of all, it incorporates a bunch of technologies from the Mobius fan line, the 120 millimeter fan line, into a 92 millimeter form factor and very, very slim to keep this about 47 millimeters high. Now, even though a bunch of those Mobius technologies are in here, some of them aren't, like that ring that you'll see around the blades. There's a reason for this though, and it's actually a really cool one. So because this is targeted towards the ITX market where cooling is at a premium, what they are doing is they are cutting very, very small slits into the side of the fan housing itself. That might look cool, maybe, but it's actually for, guess what, VRM cooling and memory cooling in that confined space. So yes, you do lose a little bit of downwards air pressure and a little bit of performance, but at the same time, your other components within an ITX system are getting more cooling. I can actually feel some of the some of the air coming out of this. So obviously it is going to work. Is that going to affect performance too negatively? Well, we're gonna see a little while later. There's also the Master Air TD5. It's basically used for upscaled ITX systems that can fit a cooler that is 57 millimeters high, but it still has that sort of downdraft effect. But you can actually see more of a traditional Mobius fan on here that has extremely high static pressure and very, very good airflow for its extremely, extremely slim size. But while these coolers are completely different sizes, there is one thing that actually ties them together, and that is what Cooler Master is calling their super conductive heat pipe. And look, these aren't your typical garden variety heat pipes. They have been specifically engineered on the ODM side for advanced cooling solutions. And they actually have a really crazy demo here that shows exactly how efficient these are. So what we have here is a 7950X processor running with a single fan Master Air MA824. So right now this is running and Cinebench is not enabled yet. You can actually see it on this screen over here. So 7950X and that single fan in the middle. So what we wanna do here is we wanna hit this with a load. So let's do that. All right, so we have a 10 minute test for throttling. Now what we're gonna do is probably the worst thing you could probably ever do with a heatsink. And that is, guess what? Let's unplug the fan and just wait here for a couple of seconds while this thing actually starts to heat up. Now in most situations, yes, a heat pipe is supposed to conduct that heat upwards through itself into the fin stack, but it's how quickly it is able to accomplish that which makes a heat sink either more efficient or less efficient in actually cooling your CPU. So let's go around here and check out what this color changing heat sink actually looks like because here you can actually see that how quickly, what was this, maybe like 30 seconds to like 45 seconds, those heat pipes actually conducted that heat 
up into the fin stack. So what we have here, this is not about to light on fire or anything, guys. What it, this is is a special coating that Cooler Master is developing, in this case to show how quickly everything works together in order to take that heat away from the CPU core. But here's the most amazing thing about it. This right now, let's see, we're at like, uh, what, what are we at? We're at maybe about a minute. This is actually cool to the touch right now, and that fan is not working. Look, I'm not cringing, okay? And yes, this does show technically how quickly these heat pipes are able to whisk that heat away, but Cooler Master is also developing this finish into something that you can actually put onto a consumer product. So it could maybe change your cooler from blue to red as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And to me, that's actually like a really, really cool concept that could lead to some really interesting designs in the future. And let's move on to something that's a little bit of a preview for CES 2024. It's something that Cooler Master is very, very passionate about working on right now. And that is their 3D vapor chambers. You've already seen 3D vapor chambers in a bunch of other coolers that have launched in the last couple of years. Unfortunately, they've sort of gotten a bad rap. Not because they're not efficient, but they're not efficient enough on lower TDP CPUs. Now with 13th gen, Ryzen 7000 series, and what's coming in the near future, 3D vapor chambers are gonna be absolutely critical. That's because in a lot of cases, once you reach a TDP of about 280 watts, a traditional cooler with those traditional heat pipes will start to get overwhelmed unless you make it absolutely massive. And that's just not possible in most situations and in most cases. It doesn't matter if it's an EATX case or an ATX case. So what a 3D vapor chamber allows Cooler Master to do is something that we've been seeing in the GPU market for a long, long time. And that's efficiently move all of this heat away from the CPU core a lot quicker than a traditional heat pipe setup would. The other benefit that that has is that the fin stack can become extremely compact in comparison to a lot of the other coolers that you would normally see. So technically something of this size could outperform extremely high-end dual tower massive heat sinks like the D15, Dark Rock Pro 4, etc. when it comes to next generation CPUs. So like I was saying, this is something that we're going to see at CES, hopefully if the development goes well, but it could lead to an absolute revolution when it comes to air cooling technology. Next up might not seem like a big deal, but to Cooler Master it actually is. That is a complete revision of the pump design for some of their master liquid series. So in this case, it's the 360 Atmos. What they've done is actually condensed a bunch of components inside of their pumps and on the cold plate and the contact plate in order to increase the pressure and the flow within the head. So what that basically means is that you're able to push more liquid through there and cool off your processor a lot quicker than you normally would. There's a couple of other things here with the Atmos. So first of all is the fact that there is recycled materials in actually the cover for the pump and a couple of the clips here. This is all towards that sort of eco-friendly push that a lot of companies are going towards here. The other thing that they want here is a, a little bit more customizability. So the entire thing is actually able to be taken off and this item right here can be 3D printed with the necessary file. So you can make this look any way you want. The nice thing here is that yes, you can 3D print this, but you're always gonna have that Cooler Master logo there that isn't this super in your face, rah, 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 Cooler Master. It's just, it's just there, it's a subtle glow. The other thing that we like, of course, you can't see those individual LEDs. This doesn't look like one of those cheap pumps like some of the other manufacturers are trying to foist on you. And to cap everything off, we have Cooler Master's flagship cooler, the Master Liquid Ion. And what this does is sort of like that culmination of every single one of their technologies into one. So what you have is you have a high resolution 2.1 inch LCD on the pump itself. Then you've got the Mobius RGB fans. You've got a slightly thicker than normal radiator and a bunch of other features. But probably the biggest item that Cooler Master is talking about right now at the show is their new Master Hub software. But Dimitri is gonna be covering that in another video that I'm going to link right up here. There you go. Another thing that I'm sort of like hell bent on here at Computex 2023 is to find the smallest power supply with the highest power density. And it's this one. No, it's actually this little guy. 
So this power supply and this power supply, both of them are over 1,200 watts. So this one is 1,250 watts and this SFX power supply is 1,300 watts. So this is the, what is it called? This is the VSFX Platinum. Now there is one thing that they just did sort of tell me and it's the big asterisk on this whole thing is the 1,300 watts is only going to be available in 220 volt countries. So basically outside the United States, North America, basically United States and Canada. So if you are down to 115, 120 volt power like we are, so you're going to be getting this tapped out at 1,100 watts. And that's something very, very important to take into account. But I see another power supply over there that actually doesn't have a fan. All right, let's go. <laughs> Eber, move. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so the final item that I wanted to cover here is sort of like a passion of mine too, and that is sort of like the passive side. You might remember I've done a couple of passive PC builds, and somebody else other than Silverstone and their Nightjar series is finally getting into the passive power supply space. So basically what this is, is the X Silent Edge, available in 750 watts. So what you're getting here is your basic fully modular power supply, but it's passively cooled 80 plus platinum. So for all of you other passive PC enthusiasts, this thing is coming out really, really soon. All right, so that's pretty much it for my whirlwind tour here of Cooler Masters thermal and I guess a single power supply unit. I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this video from Computex 2023 and there's definitely gonna be some more coming up. Take care guys, have a good one.